what is going on, people. I am here for actually a second review of the day. It's actually a movie, again, that I got a screener for. Hasn't come out just yet. But it's a movie that I got in contact with the uh, director on Instagram. He asked me, you know, if I wanted to uh, do a little review for the movie. I believe, I'm actually, I'm going to hold off. I don't know uh, when it's coming out or, you know, how or what company it's coming out for. So I'll hold off on that. But if you couldn't tell by the title, the movie is called Human Hibachi. Uh, definitely a different style. Uh, well, not different style, but <clears throat> it's more uh, shot on tape kind of deal, like uh, found footage type deal kind of movie. Um, but before I get into this review, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoy the review, you can wait till the end, hit the thumbs up, and of course hit the bell button so you know when I do upload more stuff. So anyway, the movie that I'm reviewing, like I said, is Human Hibachi. It's written and directed by Mario Cerreto. Uh, hopefully I said that right. Ho uh, Mario Cerreto uh, the third. Like I said, hopefully I said that right. Uh, it stars uh, Wataru uh, Nishida, uh, Andrew Husaker, Zachary Pun Chung, among many others. So pretty much, it's like a tale of two movies. Because in the first half of it, like I said, most of it is uh, like a found footage type deal. But the other one shot like... Pretty much, it's it's um, this gir uh, girl's 35th birthday, and her boyfriend uh, is taping it. He says he wants to document this, uh, you know, for later on. It's going to be a full day of her birthday, going to different places, whether it be, you know, uh, getting a mani-pedi kind of deal, uh, going to get a new dress, uh, going out to uh, a bar with, uh, you know, friends and all this stuff. So it almost seems like it's like a... Um, like a birthday weekend kind of deal because it seems like it takes uh, place over, you know, a couple days kind of deal. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, it's just throughout the whole day he's taping, you know, normal stuff, I guess, every once in a while. A lot of people are asking him why he's videotaping everything and he explains I'm, I'm just for, you know, a documentary kind of deal. I'm documenting the whole time. So they were okay with it. But then he would take these, like, intimate scenes. Uh, his girlfriend in the shower. Uh, he was going to take them, you know, having sex and all this stuff. But throughout the whole thing, you know, like I said, the first half of the movie is pretty much that. Where you're learning the characters and so on and so forth. You find out that he works at this... Uh, you know, sushi restaurant and all this stuff. And he um, he ends up, he's like, listen, I'm going to take you out. Uh, they meet up with a couple. Um, and they go out to this hibachi restaurant, I guess you want to call it. Uh, so throughout the night, they're drinking, they're having fun. They're, uh, you know, doing their thing, I guess you want to call it. And let's just say it goes from that to a completely different movie. I don't want to get way too deep into it, but let's just say uh, what fun and entertainment they were having in the beginning of the movie turns out to be something completely different. And if you could tell by the title, uh, you can kind of sense what goes on. Uh, like I said, don't want to get way too deep into it. But, you know, there's certain scenes that are very graphic in this one. Um, it's one of those things where, um, let's just say for um, certain parts of it i was just I, I was impressed by you know the different um uh effects that they had in here um more special effects kind of deal more like um uh what do you want to call it uh makeup and stuff like that makeup effects as opposed to uh your uh cgi and stuff like that uh but there was certain things i was like oh that, that looks pretty interesting to tell you the truth uh and let's just say like i said it's it's a, a tale of I was going to say a tale of two tapes, but it's like a tale of two movies because, again, your first half is more uh, building up the suspense, I guess. Not even suspense, but building up, uh, you know, the storyline, meeting your characters, and then that second half is completely something totally different. It takes, let's just say it takes a, a part, while I was watching the second half of it, it kind of has like a um, hostile type feel to it, if you want to go that far, completely different uh, movie, but it has that, like, when you watch it, you'll understand what I'm talking about, because it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you get, 
you get certain people that want certain things. I'll leave it at that. Uh, like I said, I want you to see it. But I was very impressed by it. It was one of those things where usually with like shot on uh, or, or um, found footage or shot on film, usually, you know, it's all right. It's, you know, nothing uh, to write home about. But this one definitely has, like I said, towards the back half of it, it has a lot of, uh, you know, gory scenes, I guess you want to call it. It has some things that I was, uh, you know, impressed with. It is on a lower budget side, so of course, like I said, you know, shot on tape, there's only so much you could do. So some things, uh, for, for some things that look, you know, really good, there's other ones that are like, okay, you know, I can, I, I can kind of guess what they were going with. Um, but yeah, I must say it's something different. It's something that, uh, you know, I've never really seen before. It kind of takes uh, a, a Two, well, the first half really is your typical, it kind of seems like a, uh, you know, like a love story kind of deal. But then that second half reverts or, or changes into something completely different. But I'd say definitely go ahead. Uh, I'll find uh, the uh, Instagram and stuff. Again, I the only way I got in contact with them uh, was through Instagram. So I'll check to see if there's a trailer. I'm not 100% sure if there is. Uh, but I'll leave it, uh, the link to the trailer to check it out. Uh, once I find out when it does come out, you know, to physical media and stuff like that, I'll put that on the bottom of this. But keep your eyes out. Uh, go ahead and check Instagram and stuff like that for, you know, movies that um, I said in the uh, previous review. I did a review for uh, Slash Lorette Party. Uh, but it's one of those things where I think in this year, a lot of independent films are going to be striving because, uh, you know, last year not much was taped. So, the, you know, throughout last year, not much went into the theater. But this uh, plus last year, <coughs> there wasn't a lot of bigger budget movies getting filmed. Uh, so I think you're going to find a lot more independent stuff, a lot of uh, lower budget films uh, getting, I don't want to say, you know, it's going to take, you know, people like me reviewing or other people reviewing independent film, but I think this will be the best time for independent film to, you know, get the limelight. So I say uh, check out Human Hibachi, uh, definitely um, different than I'm used to, uh, but nonetheless, I enjoyed what I watched. So uh, check out the Instagram, check out the trailer, uh, check out, you know, the rest of my uh, reviews and stuff on here if you haven't. Like I said, right before I did this, I did a uh, Slash or Red Party uh, tomorrow, uh, Saturday. Uh, if you're interested, we're talking to the people behind Hacksaw, um, Anthony Leone. Hopefully I said that right. Again, horrible with names. So in the beginning of this, I apologize if I got your name wrong. I'm just horrible. And uh, Amy K. will be talking to them too tomorrow. And uh, yeah, just, you know, stick around. I'm going to have more reviews. I'll have more stuff coming this year. And uh, I'm excited. So I guess until next time, I'll see you guys.